So after years of planning, Vallejo just opened a new development with 74 new units of affordable housing. The Blue Oak Landing has been life-changing for some families, like Chantel Posada and her seven-year-old son. They moved in after years of living in a trailer hidden within sight of the building that she now calls home. Seven years, my son's seven. I'll just thank God. I didn't want to raise him out there. I just started crying. I just, I, our day was finally there. It's finally here. We could finally get off the streets. You know, to give you an idea of the need for this, there were 1,000 people on the wait list within two hours. So imagine thinking you're about to get the keys to one of those apartments, only to find out there's a problem. Wilson Walker has the story of other applicants tangled up in a lot of red tape. Yeah, this is the one that we signed with the lady from housing saying I was going to be moving in there. It has the address for Sacramento Street, what apartment number I was going to be. It was a life changing opportunity for Tamika Turner when she was told that she would have an address of her own. Her spot at Blue Oak Landing would end 13 years of homelessness, but when the time came to go pick up the keys, excitement would turn to frustration. Sat there for like maybe five hours, and then she told us that they were having problems with the my verification for an address that I was using for mailing. Her Turner and her partner quickly found themselves in a pile of paperwork and confusion. They said that we were approved. Approval is approval. Their search for answers bounced around several offices. They also dropped by the development where most of the units had already been filled, something that is only increasing the anxiety. I am. I want to cry because she needs to get off the street. Make it. So, with no answers, the couple decided it was time to get off the street and regroup. So, they found a motel room where they have tried to clear up the confusion. And my health is bad now, so I need to get in a place. And so, I had signed up for those apartments. And I've, I've done everything that they told me to do and signed my voucher, and they haven't let us move in. Yeah, so in our tenant selection plan, because of our federal funding, we have strict requirements on income um, verification. So if it's been over 60 days since pay stubs or just verification of homelessness has been given to the city, then we have to re up those verifications before they move in. Assistant so, City Manager Jillian Hayes says they're working to clear up the delays often caused by HUD guidelines. And in some cases, the difficulty of staying in touch with clients who do not have an address. We've got people on the phone, email, and in person to help assist. So we're trying to hit all ways of submission of the paperwork to make it as easy as possible. But for those caught in limbo, it is a tense wait for a golden opportunity. Why well, say uh, you're approved and then tell you come in and get your keys and your release and turn around and tell you, oh, I'm sorry, we didn't do all the verification, which you've had months to do. We actually met a number of people who hit some kind of unexpected delay here at the finish line. So what is going on? Well, one common problem is that the paperwork is simply out of date. A lot of application materials expire after a month or two. And how often does a large construction project finish on time, right? So one delay there and a number of people might have to go back and resubmit information. As for this particular case, we're still waiting to see what the specific hangup is and how it gets resolved. But bigger picture, these projects are compli complicated. Even getting people inside can be complicated at a time when we need a lot more housing.